Cars can tilt up to two degrees, depending on the train's speed and the tightness of the curve. The device limits the centrifugal force through the curves so that passengers will barely notice it. Even now, while we're just talking, it feels like we're moving very fast. Well, that's right. At present, trains on this line run at 275 kilometers per hour, but we're already going much faster than that. We've just hit 310. Incredible. And uh, we're in the process of accelerating up to 330. Today's test calls for navigating a curve at 330. What's that sound? It's the train leaning into the curve. We really are leaning now to the left. As the train enters the curve, the degree of tilt and its precise timing are repeatedly adjusted. I can definitely feel that we're leaning as I stand here, but I can't say it bothers me. Hmm. Well, that's the idea. We're working to make sure it doesn't. I see, ensuring the best settings. Next up, apparently, is the key test for this outing. We are now running at 335 kilometers per hour, and we're going to do a brake test to see how quickly we can bring the train to a stop. This test will measure the distance needed to make an emergency stop. The goal is to do it within four kilometers, like today's Shinkansen trains, although we're going a lot faster. It's okay to stand here? Oh, sure. Should I hold on? Uh, no, no, it's okay. Now the brakes are on. Ah. It's stopping much more smoothly than I would have expected. This test allows the engineers to gather data on how to tweak braking power and timing to shorten the train's stopping distance. We will soon stop for a moment. Please stand by. It's fast, it really is. Stopped at kilometer 409.7. What was the distance? Mm, it was about 3.8 kilometers. So the experiment was successful? Mm, it's just about what the design specified, so yes, we could call it a success. We also got the rare privilege of looking inside the driver's cabin at the front of the train. Wow, there's not much space here. Yes, uh, the long nose means the cabin has to be made rather small. I've never been up to the front of a bullet train before. Wow, it's really cool. <laughs> On Fastec, the driver's cabin looks very like an airplane cockpit. Its somewhat cramped dimensions are dictated by the narrowness of the nose. Here's the view from it by day. The angle of the front windshield ensures a sufficient range of vision, even though it's so narrow. We will soon be arriving at Kitakami Station. There's the station. I can see it now. It's kind of exciting seeing it from the cabin like this. At 12.46 a.m., we arrive at Kitakami Station. The Fastec has been conducting test runs like this for about three years. What other stuff do you have to work on? Well, starting in February and probably right through March, we need to do various tests on the Fastec's ability to operate in the snow because this line, as you know, runs through an area where there's always a lot of snow in winter. After that, we'll do durability tests on some of the newly developed components. 
I was really excited from the moment I saw the train by how cool and smooth and modern it looked. But once I went inside and saw all the experiments they were doing, I really was amazed. In one test, the train is sprayed with water to see what effect that has on brake performance. Mm, interesting. So all those tests are to gather data on stuff like that? That's right. And the Fastec has already covered 220,000 kilometers on its test runs, equivalent to going around the Earth five times. Wow. The tests are now in their final phase, and they've gathered loads of data. They'll use it when they start manufacturing trains for commercial use. Those are scheduled to come into operation in 2010. I see. Well, now it's time to bring in an expert to tell us more about how the Fastec was developed. Dr. Kazuhiko Nagase is a professor at Kanazawa Institute of Technology and one of Japan's top experts in railway systems engineering. So what's the idea of making bullet trains run even faster? Well, one reason is the competition with air travel, which is pretty fierce. Wherever you have a route dominated by aircraft,